Uh, obviously, we need to append this to each field uh, that, that exists with the type password. And then we'll go ahead and start the actual process of replacing this data. So it's not really a complex um, piece of code, uh, but it's slightly longer than you might expect. So obviously follow it through carefully uh, and take a look at what we're actually doing and it should make sense. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is uh, wait for our document to be ready. So wait for the DOM to be uh, loaded and everything. And inside here we create a function. So when document is ready, we have this function. Everything inside here is we want what we want to run uh, when the document is loaded. This is just really standard jQuery notation that we would use when we write, you know, pieces of code uh, that belong to jQuery. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and place this checkbox after every password field or every instant of a every instance, sorry, of a password field that's on our page. So over to our ext.js file again, we're going to need to use a selector um, and that's, this selector is going to select all types or all input with the type password. So we use a selector input which on its own would select all input fields but we can go ahead and use square brackets and inside specify which type we want to select and in this case we're selecting all fields with a type password. So quite straightforward uh, in terms of selectors. What we then want to go and do is use the after function to place some code after each field. And what this will do is it will just literally put it next to the field. So this is perfect that in the sense that what we want to do is just add an, an input type with a check uh, with a checkbox an input with a uh, checkbox type. Okay, so in here we're going to write some. Uh, sort of HTML and we're going to put this input field in. So we go ahead and use input type equals something and uh, this is obviously checkbox. So now you'll notice that when we refresh you see this checkbox appears after this password field. Uh, if we were to duplicate this password field in our index.php file it would work the same way and, and this would be appended after it. Uh, we'll just go take a look at that now and we'll go and copy this and just put a break afterwards and paste that in and when we refresh you see it's done exactly the same for this however if I was to say change the third one or change the second one we'll just change to a type text you can see that it doesn't uh, adhere or this checkbox isn't isn't output after the text field so this is obviously uh, compatible with all uh, password fields so it's sort of like cross compatible Okay, so we need to assign an ID to this checkbox to be able to assign an event handler to it. So I'm going to go ahead and give this an ID of SP underscore checkbox. SP just stands for uh, show password. And after this, we want to just give the user some text to know what the uh, checkbox actually does, uh, which is obviously show the password. So when we refresh now, we've got the checkbox and show password. So now the process uh, of actually showing this text uh, or this checkbox after the text field or the password field, uh, we need to assign an event handler for when this tick uh, is ticked or unticked. So the event handler we need to use is change. So we come down to the next line and we want to go ahead and select dot sp underscore checkbox. So now we're selecting all um, or all elements on a page with the class SP checkbox and that should only be the one here that we've generated for every password input type. So we want to go ahead and assign the change event handler to this checkbox or this uh, this particular class and we want to go ahead and create a function inside of here uh, that will run when this changes. So let's go ahead and just alert something out so um, changed for example now when we uh, refresh and we check this box, uh, oh it should have worked but it hasn't. Okay so let's go and take a look at why that might be. So it's dot, oh sorry yeah I've given this an ID uh, and I meant to give it a class so we, I mean it doesn't really matter what you do, you could assign an ID uh, but obviously you would use a hash here. Uh, but I'm going to keep it as a class for now so let's go ahead and type class uh, then it's going to be a lot easier to modify this uh, in CSS if you require 
So now that we check it, uh, that value has changed or that checked value has changed. So we get this changed box or alert box. When we uncheck it, we also get changed. So now when this changes, um, we can go ahead and start the process of showing the text inside of here. So let's go ahead uh, back over to our text editor. Obviously get rid of that alert because we don't want to be doing that. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, and create six uh, different variables. So we're going to we're going to assign values to six different variables. The first variable is um, going to represent the object that's in front of this checkbox or the object that's before this checkbox. And obviously, the object that's before every checkbox with the class SP checkbox will always be this field here because we assign this straight afterwards. Remember, we used uh, after to um, to uh, pop this uh, checkbox after the password field. So I'm going to give uh, I'm going to create a variable called pre prev or prev, which is short for previous, and this is going to be equal to this dot. Prev, which again stands for previous. 